8 a.m., that crime scene is completely open. Yes. Unsecured. Yes. And available to anybody who wanted access to it. Correct. One of the reasons to secure a crime scene is to minimize the possibility of evidence destruction on one hand, correct? Yes. And evidence tampering on the other hand, right? Sure. And examples of evidence tampering could be just moving a piece of evidence. Objection, Aaron. Let's, that, that's overruled. Just not too much further with this, though. I've just got a couple of quick questions about this. C could you repeat that, please? Sure. An example or a couple of examples of, of evidence tampering could be something as simple as moving a piece of evidence, moving it from here to here, correct? That would be tampering, yes. Hiding evidence, getting rid of it, right? Yes. Um, taking evidence out of the scene or putting evidence back into the scene, correct? Yes. Or even planting evidence that didn't exist before. All of those would be examples of tampering with evidence. Yes. And setting up a proper crime scene minimizes or eliminates the possibility for that. Setting up a crime scene would eliminate. Could you say that again, please? Sure. Setting up a crime, a proper crime scene, securing a proper crime scene minimizes or tries to eliminate the possibility of that type of evidence tampering. Obviously. It would, but at this point in time, we weren't aware if we were at this point in time the state police had said they weren't responding so there was the, there was no longer an area to preserve at that point so in your mind well let me phrase it a different way what that means is after 8 a.m that scene was just open it was you found uh both the blood that we saw pictures of and the cocktail glass that we were just introduced to this morning, correct? Yes. You searched the, air, air, the area that was adjacent to where you believed the body was. Is that right? We searched, I would say, about a six by six or seven by seven area. Six by six or seven by seven? Roughly. Six feet on each side. Right. Um, you were looking for, obviously, anything that was out of place, anything that didn't belong. Yes. Like a man size 12 shoe would have caught your attention? It would. A black baseball cap would have caught your attention? It would. A piece of plastic broken probably would have caught your attention? Yes. Certainly 45 pieces of plastic would have caught your attention. Yes. And between you and Officer Seraph. Sergeant Good, Officer Mullaney, Lieutenant Gallagher, none of that was found. Now, the only things we found were the stuff, were the things that were documented. You did find the blood, however, is that right? Yes. Who, who literally physically leaned down and scooped that blood up? Me. And that was done in a plastic solo cup that we've heard a little bit about. Right? Yes, yes. You're aware that those solo cups are unsealed? I believe Lieutenant Gallagher got them out of a sealed package. When I say unsealed, I mean they don't have a lid on them. They're not airtight containers. Correct. So once you scoop up the snow and the dirt, the debris, and the grass, and everything else, along with the blood, they're just open for, just open to the air. Yeah, there was, there was snow and blood. There was no dirt and debris in the, in the class that I can recall. You're sure about that? There's no dirt and snow? I didn't observe any, no. You didn't observe any dirt in the snow? You don't think there's dirt in the snow? I didn't observe any any dirt in the glass. Um, excuse me, the uh, cup. Okay. Um, certainly wasn't a sterile cup. No. Certainly wasn't a crime scene cup. No. Um, you're aware that the Massachusetts State Police Crime Lab warns against collecting any biological material in anything made of plastic. Correct? Are you aware of that? No. After the, well, when you scooped up the blood, did you videotape that process so we know exactly which blood stain was scooped up from where? I don't recall if it was uh, videotaped. 
but we did not document which scoop went in which cup. Okay. So if there's multiple contributors to blood, sorry, multiple contributors of the blood, we'd sort of have no idea which blood drop belonged to whom, correct? Objection. Sustained. Once the, these unsealed cups were in your possession, what did you do with them? Uh, the cups were placed into the Toyota Tundra that I was driving that day and ultimately returned back to the police station. Okay, and you talked a little bit about the process once you returned back to the station. They were put in a brown evidence bag, correct? Yes. And ultimately, when you log these uh, items into the... Tell me the name of it again. It's the temporary evidence? Temporary... <clears throat> excuse me. The blood was put in temporary evidence refrigerator. Okay. Inside the evidence bag. Uh, the cups are still inside the evidence bag and it's logged in. I don't recall that. I'm not sure if I took them out or not. I, I don't recall. You indicated that there's a, an item number or property number that's assigned to them. Yes. There is generated a seal or a label to go on the evidence that's being stored, correct? It should, yes. And the bag is sealed. The evidence bag is sealed like the, this red tape that we see on this thing, correct? When possible, there are certain items that can't be bagged, and then sometimes you create a tag and attach it to a tag. Right, but if it's a brown paper bag that's an evidence bag, you certainly just fold over the edge of it and just put a red evidence seal on it to make sure that that's secure and not tampered with, correct? That would be one way to do it, yes. I don't recall if I left them in the bag or took them out of the bag. I don't recall. If you left them in the bag, you likely would have, if you're booking them into evidence, you likely would have used some red crime scene, I mean, yeah. not crime scene, tape, evidence tape. If I had left them in the bag, I would have put the property label right on the bag. So everybody could see it? Yes. Okay, there's an evidence bag with important evidence in it. Don't mess with it. It's secure, correct? Yes. Can we have tab 23? Do you recognize the what's depicted in this uh, exhibit? I believe it's, I believe it's uh, Miss Reed's vehicle. Um, for the record, you're looking at what's been previously marked as Exhibit 37. Uh, you see a little white rag down there by the right rear quarter panel? Yes. Okay. Let's go to tab 24. You see that white rag? Yes. Sorry? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Did you see a bag sitting next to it? I do. Doesn't look like an evidence bag, does it? No, it looks like a stop and shop bag. Stop but and actually, shop. it looks like an evidence bag. It just doesn't say Canton Police on it. It says stop and shop. But it's it does look like an evidence bag. It's the same thing. That's a grocery bag. It is. And that's exactly what our evidence bags look like. So that's what I thought it was at first. Right, except it doesn't say anything about evidence on it. It says stop and shop, correct? Correct. What do you think is in that evidence bag? I'm sorry, stop and shop bag. I'm not sure. You were when these pictures were taken? I could tell that it's the Canton Police Sally Port. So it's at some, some point after the state police had seized the vehicle. And at some point after you had brought the solo cups back to the station. Correct. Matter of fact, these were taken on February 1st when Canton, the, sorry, the Massachusetts State Police Crime Lab finally took possession of these items of evidence, correct? I was not in the police station for those two days. Let's look at the next tab, um, tab 25. You recognize that? It appears to be solo cups with uh, substance inside. Are those just any solo cups or those the solo cups that you took back to the station from 3430? I mean, I couldn't say definitively, but it certainly looks like it. Uh, it appears that they have red liquid material floating in the bottom? Yes. That appear to be blood? Uh, the top three I can see. Yeah, uh, the only two I see that don't have it are the bottom two left. Okay. 
let's look at the next tab, which is 26. And if you see somebody with gloved hands opening that bag, <coughs> same bag, little white rag right there. I do. Okay. That appear to be the same six solo cups. That you just showed me in the previous slide? Yes. Yes. So are those the same six solo cups that you gathered at the scene at 34 Fairview and ultimately brought back to Canton PD? They certainly appear like they are, but I, I can't say definitively, but they Any appear reason? to be. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on your words. Go ahead. Appreciate it. They appear to be they appear to be the same solo cups, they but I couldn't say definitively. Let's go back to tab twenty four. And the reason you can't say definitively, Lieutenant, is because there is no label on this bag, is there? Not on that side of it, no. There is no property number on this bag, is there? Not on the side that's visible to me, no. There's no evidence tape on this bag, is there? Not on the side that's visible to me, no. Well, let's look at the other photographs. Are you, well, before we do that, are you suggesting that all of that material is on the other side of this bag? I, I don't know. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm telling you I don't know. Okay. Let's look at the next lab, uh, next tab. Looking at it from the top, does it appear anywhere from that vantage point that there's evidence tape that's ever been put on that bag, that has ever been secured? I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Well, one of the ways that you can tell that evidence tape has been put on an item is because when the evidence tape is placed on it, it's completely sealed. And if, in fact, it's, that seal is ever broken, it's not torn off, it's cut, and there's initials put on, correct? Objection. Sustained. Have you ever used evidence tape before to seal anything? I'm sure I have. I don't recall off the top of my head. How long have you been a detective? I'm sorry, how long were you a detective when you were a detective? Uh, I was a detective for 11 months as a sergeant, and then I was a detective for 15 months back in 2011-12. And in your experience, as, and how long have you been a police officer? Uh, over 24 years. So in your 24 years of experience and over a year as a detective, you can't remember if you've ever used evidence sealing tape? As I said, I'm sure I have. I just can't recall one off the top of my head. When, if you believe you, if you can recall using it at all, isn't the protocol that when evidence sealing tape is used to seal an item of evidence, when it's removed, it's not torn off, it's cut, and then new sealing tape is put over it with an initial and a date, correct? Objection. Do you know the answer to that? I don't. Okay, next question. Thank you. Um, that's all I have for this.